In this question, we are being given the probability density function of a random variable x. Now, given it's a density function, that means x is a continuous random variable. That's important. It's defined between 0 and 1. And then we are being asked to verify, verify that the integral from 0 to 1 of that probability density function is equal to 1. So, of course, property of the CDF that uh, it goes all the way up to 1 if we uh, look for the CDF for the entire space on which X is defined. Now, what does that mean? Consumption for a certain machine, that's what X is in this question. So X equal to naught means no consumption at all. X equal to 1, we can think of this as using a full tank, okay? 1 for a full tank. Uh, so it's not an absolute consumption, but a relative, relative to the tank size, say. So let's first understand what this PDF we are being given looks like. So that's to be defined between 0 and 1, outside it's 0. And let's uh, pop in a value of 0. And then clearly what we get is uh, 3. And then let's think about what happens for x equals 1. We get a value of 0, okay? because there's a 1 minus 1 equals 0 in there. What about an intermediate value, one like 0.5? And we will use that later. Well, g of 0 0.5 is then 3 times a half squared, and that's 3 over 4. So that's 0 0.75. So that's about here. So the PDF will look approximately like this. So that's just a sketch of the PDF. So now we need the integral. And g of x, the CDF, is the integral from 0 to x of the PDF. We need a new variable, PDF at z over d z. So what we are being asked for is to confirm that the CDF for x equals 1, therefore the integral from 0 to 1, okay, so that's what the uh, upper margin of that integral indicates, that this is equal to 1. So <clears throat> I think it's possibly easiest to, uh, at least for me with limited maths knowledge, to um, write out the squared function 1 minus x squared and therefore 1 minus z squared is 1 minus 2z minus z squared. And then I forgot a plus here, that was plus z squared. And so this is basically the integral. We need 3 minus 6z six, six plus 3z squared. So we need to find the function, the derivative of which is the term in the parentheses. So the derivative of 3z is 3. The derivative of uh, negative 3z squared is negative 6z. And the derivative of z cubed is 3z squared and then there's a constant in there. So if we now plug in the one value first and then we need to, uh, so we plug in one into that square parenthesis term and then we subtract the square parenthesis term with zero. So when we plug in one we get three minus three plus one, if we plug in zero we get zero so that's one and therefore we have confirmed what we were being asked to show. The second part of that first question is that we should calculate the probability that x is smaller or equal to 0 0.5. In our words, we want to find the CDF of 0 0.5. So we'll use the same formula which we had just derived. We have the square term, the term the squared brackets. But now instead of from 0 to 1, we need from 0 to 0 0.5. So again, we plug in 0 0.5 first and we get some term and then we subtract whatever value we get when we plug in 0 into the squared term. Of course, we know that already from the previous calculation at 0. What happens if we plug in 0 0.5 or 1 over 2 is 3 over 2 minus 3 over 4 plus 1 over 8. Okay. And that we can uh, simplify. Uh, the common denominator is 8, and that's then 12 minus 6 plus 1. 
and that is 7 eighth. So the probability that x or the consumption is smaller than a half or smaller than equal than a half is 7 over 8. So the second part of the question, I copied that here again, so you want to find that s for which the probability that x is larger than s is smaller than 10% or 10%. So now to fully understand this question, <coughs> let's just recall to ourselves that x was defined between 0 and 1. And we said 1 was a full tank, use of full tank 0, use of nothing. So we really need to understand the CDF function to understand the setup or the initial problem in that question. CDF is g of x and x we have on the horizontal axis and x defined between 0 and 1. Now the lowest value the GDF will be 0. For the largest possible value the GDF, CDF will be 1. Okay, So somewhere in between Let's see, we previously calculated that g of 0.5 was 7 eighths. Okay, so it will be here and the CDF altogether will look something like that. That cross should be on the line. So what we now want to find out is that value of x, and we call it little s, where the probability that the x is larger than that s is smaller than 10%. So now on the left hand side I marked off 0 0.5 on the vertical axis that should be 0 0.9 okay so we want to find that little value s where the CDF is 0 0.9 so 0 0.9 on the vertical not 0 0.5 so the g of s we previously figured out was just 3s minus 3s squared plus s cubed and we want this to be 0 0.9. Why is that the question we need to solve? So we're basically saying that g of x small or equal to s should be 0 0.9. The question really states, give us the probability that x is larger than s should be 0 0.10. But that's of course just the opposite of the probability that x is small or equal to s is equal to 0 0.9. Now, we basically need to solve for s in this cubic equation. Now, cubic equations are a formula, but I can't remember it. I don't want to look it up. So let's just use the opportunity to uh, sharpen our Excel skills. Now, s could take values from 0 to 1. Now, I use discrete values here, 0 0.01, 0 0.02, 0 0.02. 3 all the way to 1. Of course you could use a finer grid as well all the way to 1. Okay, So you could use a finer grid 0 0.001, 0 0.002 and so forth. And now we calculate g of s and in here I'll just type in the formula for the CDF. That was 3 times the value of s plus no it was actually minus 3 times s squared. Okay, so 3 times s minus 3 times s squared plus s cubed. Okay, now we can just copy that across. I just double click the little square box and it will automatically copy the formula down. And we can see that at 0 0.5, for instance, the value is 0 0.875 and that is the same hopefully as 7 eighths, and that's of course right. Now we can see a value of 0 0.9 for the CDF is reached at approximately an x value of 0 0.54. Yeah, 0 0.54 would be the closest x value. So g of 0 0.54 is 0 0.90266. So this 0 0.54 is sort of an approximate solution to the second part of this question. If we want it more precise, we either figure out what the cubic equation formula is, or we use um, the solver in Excel. Okay, so we use the Excel solver, because that's a quite good skill 
to know in Excel as well. So here I've just copied one of the pair of cells from the left hand side across. I just it just happened to be the 0.5. Now we need the solver. We go to options, add ins. That's what we want the solver add in. So go to the bottom here and go to solver add in analysis tool pack is a good thing to have so I just click that you only need that to do that once on your computer okay if you've done it already you will already have in the data tab a solver option here so let's click on solver so what we want to solve is we want that this CDF function which contains that formula which we used before takes a value of 0 0.9 and we want to achieve that by changing the value of s I started off with 0.5. Click OK and click OK here, and you get a solution. The best value Excel can find is 0.53584. Okay, so the exact solution is 0.53584.